Hello and welcome back to the Portadown Preview Show. Happy New Year to everybody. This is our first show of 2022. Alongside me, as always, I'm joined by Dave the Rave Wiggins. Dave, how are you keeping? We're all going to save you <laughs> to the cut the up of shade final. Doing good, man. Got a wee song stuck in my head. <laughs> Uh, I'm not even continuing with this. In fact, you know what? <laughs> four <nil Palamena. sighs> We're joined by a returning guest after Luke Skywalker. He's the most sought after man in the galaxy. We're joined by Gareth Hanna. Gareth, how are you keeping? Um, I'm much better after that intro. That was very nice. Well, we've been chasing That's you for quite a while. And, you know. I, know, I know, I know. You just kept asking me. On, I was playing hard to get, you know. Before mm. before we pressed record, we also referred to you as Kurt Cobain and the Fifth Beatles. So mm. that was before you tied your hair up, wasn't it? Well, I had to look more presentable, you know, more professional. I know. I know. <laughs> so as I was saying, uh, we've been looking Garth back on the show for a while, but then conveniently decides to show up again after going out on a beat for the <laughs> Boxing Day. So <laughs> incidentally. <laughs> uh, right. Do you know what? We'll get straight into it. I know there's been a lot that's gone on since our last show. We recorded Oh, over three weeks ago now, Dave, wasn't it? It was, so, it was yeah. you weren't actually, do you know what? You weren't on the last show, you couldn't make it. So it was me and Michael Clark did it on our own. And that was dream, yeah, dream was, team, dream uh, team. Basically, was, like what name me a dream team of two comedians, like to I, me, I, t- to me, I to you, Chuckle Brothers. Let's go, Chuckle <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> hey, Ronnie's. How's this going <laughs> for uh, it's a good night for me? <laughs> um, I was just thinking, Harchester United, and you said dream team. Yeah. Oh yes, indeed. That's going back a while. That's a wee throwback here. So <laughs> it's been over three weeks since recorded. So there's been a lot that has gone on since then, and we'll try and cover a lot of it. But listen, we're gonna we'll address the elephant in the room here straight away. Well, it wasn't even Boxing Day. Boxing Day plus one, Porter Nine, unfortunately fell to defeat at Shamrock Park against our fierce middle star rivals Glenavon now that morning well Gareth before that morning we were speaking and you were saying you were going to be gutted because it was going to be the first middle star derby at Christmas you missed in years and then the Cliftonville Crusaders game got postponed and do you know what I saw your tweet and I could just see that I'd, I, obviously it's a tweet but I could see the delight in your face typing that <laughs> you were finally going to make it to Shamrock Park that day and you, yourself know. Yeah, I haven't missed a, a derby since like I started supporting uh, the the team that I grew up supporting. <laughs> um, in <laughs> Avon, let's just call it, let's, let's just call a spade a spade. <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> boom boom. Um, yeah, since about two thousand, so I was very sad that I was going to miss it. And then uh, yeah, just a twist of fate that uh, me and Philip Major, who were supposed to be commentating at the uh, Solitude, got shifted over to Shamrock and were able to be there. But. Um, I yeah, just say so, it, Philip Major, Portadown's most decorated player of the last 32 years. Gareth Hanna, Glenavon's most decorated player of the last 32 <laughs> years. Well, I've won the league as many times as uh, any Glenavon player has in the last 50 years. I'll say it for you, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so from a poor down point of view, it probably summed up by... Uh, a couple of words that rhymed with dynamite that you said before we started uh, we started recording, Neil. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't get over how how like the second half really. Um, but like how how did you feel after? Because at halftime you're sort of thinking me and Philip were sitting at halftime going, "This is set up really nicely now. This is going to be a cracker of a second half." And it felt like we then spent forty five minutes waiting for it to start. Because playing against nine men, like what there was Lee Bonus header that he sort of scuffed, and and that was it. Like it, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Like there was no moving the ball quickly. There was no trying to like Lanham just sat in and were allowed to just sit there. They, didn't, they weren't moved about the pitch. Um, there was no two on ones created out wide. It just, it just seemed like they passed the ball out wide fairly slowly and then lumped a fairly hopeful ball into the box. Like they didn't even try and get to the byline all that often. It was just like get it wide halfway up the Alan's half of the pitch and then hoof it in. And they were never like like Lee Bonus is decent in the air, but Danny Wallace was on brilliant form and nobody was going to beat him in the air. And it was just like how did you feel after watching that second half? I imagine it was one of the, the most first delighted, time. absolutely delighted I was. <laughs> <laughs> um Oh, I mean, it was devastated. It's not just, it's not just getting beaten by Glenavon. It's not just, 
11 players against nine. It's the whole, like... Now, at least we're still able to sing Have You Ever Seen Glenavon Win the League? And that will always bring I us love a that, certain... But I, I, but it's, being sung by, it's being sung by a load of guys who are about 16, and therefore, well, I don't need to say it, do I? Well, they've maybe seen us win. <laughs> they've, they've, at least they've seen us... They've at least they've seen us win it once, probably. But I don't know for some of them. Well, here, but what I'm gonna know what seen. what I was gonna say it's was like the championship. Yeah. Oh, okay, for you counting that now. Yeah. What I was gonna <laughs> say was then that one didn't even win the championship. We went up the playoff. <laughs> it's all it's always brought comfort to that Glenavon can't beat Porter down at Shamrock Park on Boxing Day. Like I I've never yeah. seen that happen before as well. Um one of those things like it was a great day and because it was on the Monday it was brilliant there was no usually on Boxing Day you're in discussions with your partner and family about what time dinner's at and when you're going to be allowed to get out to the match and you know can you stay on for a drink after you coming home for dinner what's going on but (laughs) I found Christmas really relaxing this year because it was that day in between Christmas and Boxing Day inverted commas you know um, it's really nice. I think they should just install that every year. I do as well, I and like even that. it means the players can probably have a glass of wine with their dinner or whatever. Yeah, you know, if I mean, there's a day in between, the now. You'd, have, you'd have thought the Port Iron players had been drinking on Boxing Day anyway. You know, <laughs> yeah, I was talking about table wine, but um, <laughs> it, you know, it was all set up. Big crowd, obviously. You know, sell out both stands. Lovely day. And it was just, just ended up being horrible from a quarter down perspective. And yeah. I, I don't want to be like, I know people accuse me of being too positive on here. And I'm not really a positive person in life. I'm sort of like, a, sound like you. I'm sort of like a realist, you know, but what I will say is because Glenavon went in at half time, one goal up. I almost think it was quite easy for them in the second half. Like Gary's team talk was obviously two banks of four, sit in, let's fight to the death here and we'll go home with three points. And that's exactly what they did. And Gary compared it to winning two Irish Cups, which gave me a little smile because, I mean, come on, like. Um, I know he was only geeing the fans up and making the most of all the excitement. And um, obviously then a couple of days later, there were a few videos circulating of Gary and certain social clubs singing anti Porter Down songs, but why not? <laughs> let let the fella enjoy it. He enjoyed he enjoyed winning the league with us and the cup with us and enjoyed taking a good wage out of Shamrock Park so he's entitled to do whatever he wants. Like I, I was devastated. Like it was just yeah. a total sickener. And actually from about fifteen minutes into the second half, I don't know who was standing beside the stage. It was just like I don't even think we'll get a draw here. You know, it just didn't yeah. look like happening. Yeah, um, me and Philip Major said the same thing. Uh, even 10, 15 minutes into the second half, we just turned to each other and said, so then I'm going winning this. Like, yeah, because, just, you know, it, it, as a man, I don't know, I'm not played football to a really low standard, like, but <laughs> for the manager to be able to give his goalkeeper and eight outfield players a very specific instruction, you know, sit in, defend for your life, you know, block everything, stop crosses. And actually, in the end, Glenavon didn't have to work that hard, did they? As you said, you know, they just had to be heading balls away. And, um, and listen, there's experienced players in there as well, Bernie and whoever else was playing there. Yeah, and that's maybe the the key word of the whole thing was that experience that Glenavon had, even up front. Uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick winning and Andy Waterworth as well but mainly Fitzpatrick won so many free kicks every time the ball was cleared up Fitzpatrick got underneath it waited until somebody touched him went down won a free kick and that bought Lenham some more time it actually looked for a while like Lenham were going to be the more likely team to score in the second half from one of those set paces mm. um, and Porter Down don't have that experience at the minute especially with Paddy out injured um, even Luke I know he's still young but he's like he's a leader in there, the leader in there, and he's missing. And like Philip counted up nine players we were sitting watching the second half that would be in and around Port Down's first team that weren't there. So like I mean, you take nine players out of Lenavon's starting team and maybe it'd be the other way around. Lenavon wouldn't have too much experience in reserve either. But um 
Like I, I do just, think that, like I know, like poor Down fans are obviously going to have been really disappointed and probably angry after watching that, um, because it was Glenavon, because it was Boxing Day, because it ended that record, and that you were against nine men for forty five minutes and couldn't really create a chance. But, um, I think you do have to take into account the amount of players that were missing. Like it's not. Is that is that? Do you feel that's being too lenient? I think we missed Adam Sally on the pitch, you know. Yeah, yeah he's a man. Um, yeah, but I mean, it just didn't happen for whatever reason. It just didn't happen, like, and it was really disappointing. Even from the fact of, you know, you get a big crowd in, you know, if if it had been a great match, you know, you had two sentences off, um, a former player who we have a bit of history with scoring Glen Allen's goal, you know, if you come out in the second half and you score a couple of goals and you maybe get a late win, a lot of that crowd who don't come every week maybe turns up at your next home match and you know gets a bit of a yeah. gets a bit of a buzz for it that they're not just coming back on Boxing Day or whatever. Um, so that was disappointing for me too. You know, just people going home disappointed and maybe not really enjoying it. I know, listen, us boys who watch Irish League every week, it doesn't matter what, if it's a high quality match or a low quality match, we'll come back. We love it. But yeah. if you want to encourage others, you need to be winning, you need to be scoring goals and people having a good time. And um, that was part of it as well, you know. Yeah, it's definitely missed a, a missed opportunity in that way. But I do think Adam Sally's a, a key point as well. And that probably on a a wider scale for poor down and just how much they do miss him because even like poor down actually started okay in that match like wasn't it Arshin missed a couple of like half Arshin scored Arshin scored <laughs> scored yeah of course yeah um, um, never, never touched the defender like <laughs> with never touched him with both of his hands <laughs> um, but he yeah. finished it well uh, and actually because because there was so much noise in the stadium I think uh, our section of boys who were singing celebrated for a good 60 seconds before they realized <laughs> that you know it was a foul uh, um, but yeah you like you really do miss sally in there lee's cuts a fairly uh lonely figure when when adam's not there i find all too often even when ported iron are sort of trying to get on top a little bit like there doesn't seem to be anybody that really supports him when sally's not there yeah i think yeah and over the last while they've been enjoying playing together and yeah, um, they formed a bit of a partnership there as well. So I just think he was missed. Um, yeah, because up yeah. until the goal, like the Glenavon look like scoring, not really, not at all. Nice goal to be fair. Nice yeah. wee bit of it was interplay, quality. wasn't it? it? Was, yeah. yeah, it was absolutely top quality from Peter Campbell and from Fitzpatrick as well. And that I, he played the one too, didn't he? Yeah, that was the difference. Like, really, Glenavon didn't look like scoring. It just looked like somebody's going to have to create something with a, that little bit of quality and. Peter Campbell had it and put it down didn't and maybe that just says what what's lacking at the end of the day like put it down or what their third bottom of the league and looking like it's, well it is a relegation battle now and they just need that little bit they need experience in this transfer window hard better and a good a great start at that and they need that little flash of quality as well just that little bit of X factor somebody who can do something different something unexpected because we're down didn't do anything unexpected in that second half. There was nobody sort of picking out that crafty pass or taking a pass somebody. They just need something. I mean, it was un- it was unexpected that we didn't score at least one goal against nine players. Like that was unexpected. <laughs> but was, it? But was yeah. it though? Was it? Well, at half time it was like. I, no, you're right. You're right. I think Glenavon going down to nine men was the worst thing that could have happened to Portadown. Because this season, whenever the onus is on us to take the game to the other team mm. we have struggled whenever we're the underdog yeah. against the likes of Linfield Larne um, Cliftonville we have performed really 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 well and dug in and you know yeah. got, a, got a few draws yes when those teams have been attacking you coming at you and, yeah. Yeah. yeah whereas Glenavon they have Sean Ward a brilliant experienced player like you said Wallace Bernie Waterworth, you know, the yeah. you know, for, and James for, what, happen, like the other exactly, defender. you know, yeah. for whatever, for, like for the faults that like Glenavon have had over the years, they always do have an experienced team. And 
it just played into their hands. It really did. And I, I, th- I actually thought Port were doing all right up until the sends off. And then yeah, they were. And it was just, it just, it, when the onus is on us, we struggled. And like David already said earlier on, one of the most deflating things for me was there's such a big crowd here. And, you know, even not even necessarily having to win the game, but even like a, a draw, you know, and it was an entertaining draw or something like that. You know, you're talking to a lot of people there that might have been like, oh, here, do you know what? I'll come down to the game next week against Limavada. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And and that's what I was sort of like, you know. We, we, we had brought our full families, both of us, haven't we? Yeah. Mrs. So, kids, the whole works like. Yeah, so <laughs> she, she actually said. I'll not be back though. <laughs> she was like, what have you brought me to? <laughs> no, to be fair, Kirsty, she did actually really enjoy it, um, specifically the chippy farm. She was like 10 out of 10 for the gravy cheesy chips and all. But no, she, uh, to be fair, she enjoyed it and she thought, you know, it was really good atmosphere and stuff and all. But she just, like, funny what you say, Gareth. Kirsty actually turned around to me and goes, Who's your number 10? And I was like, Lee Bonus. She goes, That boy does some amount of run, but there's no one else running with him. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Could have got on the podcast for that. Uh, uh, it's, it really better, in, better yeah. insight than us three, anyway, I'd imagine. But, um, <laughs> and then another thing, another <clears> thing she said, <throat> sorry, was <throat> with Glen Avon. She was like, Who's your man at the back with the long hair? And I was like, Danny Gareth Wallace. Anna. Gareth Anna. Oh, <laughs> not, not the, not the back of the hair. stand. Oh, that long the... hair. Oh, and, uh, that's not long she, hair. She was like, he's, she was like, he's hateful. He goes, he's doing all the dirty stuff and all. And then I was like, yeah, but he's, he's playing a blinder. Like yeah. he's, you know, and everything that was coming out. I mean, he's winning it. He was, I think he did get mad of the match, didn't he? Uh, he yeah, did he? he well, he should have done Gary Hamilton said. I, I think he did. Matt Fitzpatrick was man of the match, but I like I think it was Wallace. Um, I thought Danny Wallace, maybe, but I thought he was superb and brilliant. Like but he was brilliant for Warren Point. Every time I saw him last season as well, to me he's Glen Adams' best signing during the summer. Like yeah. the boys from Linfield got all the attention, but um, Danny Wallace is the best of all of them for me. Just, he's an absolutely top drawer centre half. He's one of the best in the league for me. I think he's absolutely superb. And from obviously I haven't been at all the Glen matches, or I've only been at a few, but. And um, by all accounts, he's been been doing that all season. Like, yeah. Um, I was just gonna say the first time my first date with my now wife Mel was in the year two thousand and one, and I took her to Shamrock Park and we stood in the terraces under the shade. <laughs> and then I didn't have a second date for about eighteen months after that. <laughs> Any wonder, dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emma's been to two Irish League matches, oh, she? and the first one was at Warren Point Town and the floodlights went out and it was called off after half an hour. The second <laughs> one was the Armagh and at kickoff the snow started and it was called off after half an hour. And that oh. was and after that she just went right up this is it. And yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's you me a thumbs up here. <laughs> you should have brought her a boxing down. Should have brought her a boxing down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that fog would have come back down again. <laughs> oh but let listen. Do you know anyway, what? that's that's all in the past. It's that's all done. Past. It's <laughs> done now. Do you know what? Glenavon have had their moment, and their fans have had their moment, and you can't you can't really begrudge them of it. No. One question: Who runs Glenavon's social media? I couldn't. I couldn't possibly comment. Ah, uh, the tweet after. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, with the day, oh, this. Oh, I this like the this like the referee too, didn't it? Named him and all. Said he's a clown. <laughs> In the middle of the match, and then it was deleted. Brilliant. That's uh, it. I didn't know about that. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, sure. It's an, it is. It's all for a game. It's, it's all for a game. It's in, it's in the past now. Um, I was going to say, you know, you just have to sort of dust yourself down and get on with it, but then <laughs> the Ballymenian edit could tank as well. Mm. So it wasn't, it hasn't. Do you know what? I mean, listen, we didn't deserve anything from Ballymenian, and I'll tell you why. Why were we wearing yellow against the team that plays the sky blue? But see, in fairness, that kit's fantastic. It is, it is but that's that is besides the point. Jason, you have you have questions to answer. Oh, mate, I, oh, <laughs> Jason's going to come down on you like a ton of bricks, man. <laughs> Has he not been on the podcast yet? It's a joke that that man, a man that does so much for the club, has not been asked. In the we don't have a we don't have a quick enough bleep machine. Just. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, what, it, it, 
I, I'm not going to speak for Jason. I'll let, you, I'll let him DM you. <laughs> I do know the answer because I was in with him and I was like, oh. He's like, ah. Uh, I'm, only, I'm only winding, Mick. Um, it is a beautiful kit, to be fair. But listen, I know we joked about it on the show before. You're right, but we're I'm football not... purists, man. <laughs> but <laughs> we went up to Balamina and we never get anything at Balamina, do we? And it's always freezing cold. Yeah, well, yeah. It wasn't, honestly, it wasn't actually that cold because uh, I was thinking about it and I got I got in well, when the bus finally arrived. It was like, oh, there's quite a decent crowd of Portland supporters here for a post boxing day, you know, defeat. Um, and, uh, and then I was standing there and I was literally thinking to myself, oh, it's not actually that cold up here today because we're always talking about how cold it is. And Slemish was looking nice. And we had a couple of nice chances in the first 10 minutes. And then it all went downhill after that. Yeah. Mm. At the bar as well. Yeah. I, I, had been, I was sitting at home at lunchtime. And the fire was lit at home. And I was curled up and I was watching TV. And I thought, I am not moving from here today. And then Levi, my son, came down. He's like, we're going to the match, Dad. I was like, oh, I don't know, son, Mova. Oh, come on, let's go to the match. So he actually encouraged me to go to the match. <laughs> so it actually, it was all right. It was a nice wee day out. Do you want to talk you know about what? the football? Or? Uh, you know what? I don't even want to talk about the match anymore. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what? There's been, listen, don't get me wrong. The Glenavon result was very disappointing. The Ballymena result was very disappointing, right? And of course, naturally, in football in this day and age, there's, you know, people, they can voice their opinion in social media. It's part and parcel of it now. And there's a lot of negativity at the minute. And I totally, I, I get it. I totally see it. Like why, you know, people are obviously disappointed. But that being said, Portadown do have it within them to pull the result out of the bag. So we'll flip it to before the Glenavon game where we played Warren Point because we covered that, you know, during the, in the last preview show. And it just shows that they can like produce well, wins. I know only. I know they've both been against only one against point, one but, point. Yeah. Yeah, but like, but you know, but these these two wins at the minute, like you know, it's against a team that would. I know. And to be fair, like plenty, like plenty of those other games, like they've taken the lead, and so I can't remember the stat now, but they've taken the lead in like something like five of their last seven games were boxing there or something like that. I can't remember the exact stat, mm-hmm. and I'd only won one of them. Like there's plenty of games that they've been a bit close to winning. Like there's been plenty of times that they've been unlucky. They haven't played crap like in boxing day every week. Like, yeah. Um, it's the, the Warren Point game, you know, encouraged me. Like, I like I know we're, we're joking there and Dave's saying about he's not a positive person and stuff. I generally am. And I I still have the faith in it, right? And I, I'm not delusional to think we're not in a relegation scrap. And, but, we, know, but we were always going we we to be in a relegation scrap. No, I know that. You know that. But because, a lot of other because... people don't. Because success, success this season was always going to be finishing tenth and not being in a playoff, yeah. and to me, we're still on target to do that. Yeah. No, it's exactly. No, I totally. I. That's what I was going to say. And the fact that you know when the chips were down against Warren Point the other week, it was that really like. I don't want. I don't know. I don't want to. Basically, you know, it wasn't like winner takes all, but it was one of them ones where, like, you know, if they had to beat us, they could totally would have swung the momentum their way. And then, but the fact we went down there, and Milltown can be a difficult place to go, and we put in a really good performance, and we won and kept a clean sheet, and blah, 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 blah. And it would have been nice. I think that would have built a wee bit of momentum. And I think that's why loads of people were excited going into the Glenavon game, because don't get, listen, people can go on about Glenavon, and no disrespect, Gareth, but they are a team that you can beat on your day. But they're also a team that can beat anybody else on their day. Do you know what I mean? They're jackling high, they're not. And you're sort of thinking, like, we can really get at them here. And I think that's why so many people are very deflated at the minute because such a good result against Warren Point. And then Glenavon were there for the take, and we didn't take that opportunity. And it sort of just feels like, here we go again. But like you said, Dave, you know, realistically, Tarek poured it down, Warren Point and Dungannon, it was going to be those four teams yeah. in the bottom four and that's exactly the way it is at the minute I know Carrick have, have pulled clear like, but yeah, I, I still think you know I still think I, there's a lot of people live in the past right and that's the same at, no matter what level it is where it's Man United fans at the minute Liverpool a few years ago Arsenal fans 
Um, and it's the same over here as well. You know, Glen Torn fans, there would have been a perfect example a couple of years ago where we shouldn't be finishing fifth, sixth because we were the Glens and, you know, we used to win leagues. And there's a lot of Portadown fans like that now because, yeah. you know, they're used to Portadown, you know, back in the 90s, like winning loads of trophies and stuff. And it's like, those days are gone. We're in a, in a totally different position now. Like, and yeah. as Dave says, finishing 10th this season has to be a success because technically we're still the new boys in the division because last season was just you know, a weird season with no fans and stuff. So I would implore anybody that's, you know, thinking of throwing the towel in, like, just please keep coming to the games and getting behind the team. And even though it is really frustrating at the minute, of course it is, but you're going to get really frustrating results when you're down at the bottom of the league. And it's like, if we just all stick together, you know, players and fans alike, we will get out of this. And, you know, okay, I've said it before a few times on the show, Port it down if we are a very young team and of course there's times where we are very naive and we were naive against Glenavon on, on uh, Boxing Day plus one because we were just launching it and their experienced players like Sean Ward etc were just oh we'll take this all day long and you can see now they're going wait we need a couple of experienced players and we brought Hart Beverly in who a, a model pro experienced has won the league you know he's at a good age he's got a point to prove as well and yeah. I am all for that sign, and I, I'm I'm very pleased with that actually. Yeah, I think it's absolutely perfect as to what was required in terms of like he's still well, like well I haven't watched him for Ballyclare, but he's obviously still uh, I'm sure he's still performing at a, at a good level. Like it's not two to three two or three years ago for me, he was one of the top centre halves in the league, and he's got a like he's a great he's a great guy too, and he'll be a great fella to have in the changing room and a a leader, which is what Portadown probably need as much as anything now. And somebody that, that has that experience, somebody who, if they're on the pitch at Glenavon, might have been able to sort of influence things and go, hey, hang on a minute, like that, that, we're not playing this right, move it quicker. And because you need that from the pitch as well. Um, and yeah, I think he's an absolutely perfect signing. But the like all the negativity around at the minute is totally understandable because. Like, yes, you're on track to finish 10th. And yes, that would constitute success. But as a fan, when you're in the thick of that, finishing 10th means that four Saturdays out of five, you're going to go home pissed off. And that's not much crack when you're in the middle of it. Well, come the end of the season, you finish 10th, you'll probably go, oh, that was all right. But when you're in the thick of it, you go, this is horrendous. I'm having a crap time four Saturdays out of five. <laughs> and it's not very fun. But that's that's the reality of things at the minute. And I think that, going in that's the, at the bottom half of the table, you know, you've got to be crap. Yeah, but I mean, but just, as you say, Neil, this is when the club needs the fans more than more than any other time. Um, and like I was going home and away to Glenavon matches the season they got relegated, and the seasons before and after that when they just about didn't get relegated. And a lot of the time, watching the football wasn't much crack. So I'm getting beat six one by Bamridge Town twice, I think, and that wasn't much fun. But at the same time, like at the end of the day, you're going out to watch football with your mates. If the team gets beat, it's crap. But like you're going out to watch football, your mates still have a good time, still get behind the team. Like, and as you say, they really, really do need it right now, especially because and I, I feel like I harp on about this probably more than anyone, but the age profile of the board down team is so young that they definitely do need support because I know whenever I was 20, if some old man had been shouting at me, telling me I was crap, I probably wouldn't have responded very well to it. But sure. if, if they were all saying, Hey, come on, we're behind here. Then I might have been like, okay, maybe I can do this. Do you know what I mean? So I think fans need to realize as well. And all like, including myself in this too. Like, whenever I was back watching, I probably shouted some not very nice things to Glenavon players in the past. So, um, <laughs> but like, yeah, it doesn't do anybody any favors. And, um, like, it's going to take time with this poor down with the, the, uh, strategy of, having of bringing through all these young players and bringing them up together because they're all they all are moving up together and so it's going to take a few years so like it's not as if you just need it through this season now at the top six next season probably won't it's going to be a bit of a slog for the next few years but that's what that's where we are and fans need to buy into that and be be part of that and enjoy that journey and try and enjoy even the crap days because sure it could be worse just when you're saying there about you know the lack of experience and stuff and one of the things that I noticed on the, the Glen Avon game, and it actually was frustrating me, and and I and I I never shout 
bad things, you know, at the players and stuff. I've, I've never ever done it. Like, it was, this is not me, like, at all, because and because I don't think it helps personally. <laughs> but I was getting frustrated with there was a couple of incidents that Glenavon, the, the Glenavon goalkeeper and stuff, you know, they were on the wind up, and you could see why. Like, there was oh, I couldn't believe I could not believe the goalkeeper didn't get booked long before he did. How? Yes, yes, How? exactly, exactly. But then the Port Iron players were getting involved and there was pushing and shoving and you're just like, you're literally falling into the trap that Glen Avon are setting here and you, Michael Ruddy was going over and pushing our players away, being like, use your loaf, your loaf here, like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. That frustrated me. I was just like, like, use your, your brains. Like, they want you to react. They're trying to get you sent off. Like, don't give them, you know, the excuse, you know, don't give the ref the excuse to send you off. Like, but, I am play like going back to the original point. I'm I, I, a bit of experience, Harb Everland. I'm very pleased um, with Dave. We've also added Jamal Dupree, um, who um, is previously at Waterford down south, and uh, Jack Smith um, from Derryaki. So tell us a bit more about those signings. Yeah, I don't know a lot about them. I know they came up through Linfield with Adam McCallum and Adam Sally and played the four of them played together in teams and things like that. So, um, I think Dupree took a bit of a break from football and, and then he was at Derryaki and went to Waterford. I think he was in the bench most of the season. Um, and Jack Smith, you know, has been around lower leagues and stuff. And I think he's got a wee bit of Irish league experience, possibly. Um, but I, th- I don't know, it'll just be, you know, the manager's talking about enthusiasm and pace and hopefully those boys bring a bit of that. I don't know whether they'll come straight in or they'll have to bide their time a little bit, but um, it is going to be a step up for them to be playing regularly in the Porter Down team, but hopefully the boys can come in and do well and take their chance. Um, Gareth, you were talking just about young young people and young players, and we're, they're human as well as we're human. See, when you're in your 20s and even 30s and younger, your self-esteem is up and down like a yo-yo, you know, it's I'm a bundle if, of anxiety on a daily basis. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you're, if you're encouraged and supported and you're, you know, it's pointed out when you do something well, you're, you're buzzing, you're flying, you're, you know, you're confident. If, if you miss hit a pass or you, you trip over the ball or you don't score a goal and you get booed or shouted at, I mean, you're just not going to try anymore. You know, I, I hate um, that. I, I hate, I hate, I hate uh, when players, I hate when your team gets booed. I yeah. hate it. It drives me bananas when it happens. And you know, and, and you know what, bo- you know, Boxing Day as well, you know, there's a lot of boos at the end and then you read on Facebook posts and forum posts. Some people posting they're there every week, but a lot of people posting they're just, you know, and we appreciate them coming out in Boxing Day, but don't come out in Boxing Day and then absolutely boo and rip into people because you don't really... Yeah understand you know and yeah. i think it's, it's important it's, for all the fans to know that like players are bloody trying like course, it's, it's, like, and sometimes have this impression that oh they're only here to pick up the money it's like well, well they're not getting paid that bloody much that they're only course. doing this for the sake of nobody wants their, to get beaten well, I, I don't care yeah. who you are whether you're playing for the under eights or you, you go out in the pitch on saturday or whenever because you want to you want to win a game of football and I'm not stupid. Football's not like any other industry. And sometimes when we're talking here at home, my wife will be like, "My football's horrible, actually, isn't it?" And sometimes it is horrible because, yeah. you know, obviously Matthew's taking a bit of stick after that match and a bit of booing and all that. And you know, sometimes in football, you know, in football you've got supporters, you've got sponsors, directors, players, coaches, manager. But sometimes the focus of the abuse falls just on the manager and nobody else. And actually, it's a football club. It's a football, you know, everybody's in it together. It's a collective experience. And when one part of it isn't working, everybody needs to rally around and try and support each other. You know, if it's any other industry or business in the world, it doesn't just fall to one person. You know, everybody gets around. And if there's a certain element struggling, then you get around and try and support it. And I think that's what you have to do going forward. I, I'm under, I just think we'll have a better second half to the season. I'm not like, you know, there's certain, I'm not going to name names, but there's certain players in our team. Uh, I've, I've seen them over the past couple of seasons who actually grow into a season. They get better as the season goes on. 
And in the last couple of years, we've actually got better as the season goes on. Um, I think with more home matches, you know, you'll have the split coming up then where loads of the matches are six pointers. And we just have to stay in around that 10th position and try and just avoid it, you know. But it's going to be, it's going to be one point than Gallon ourselves and Carrick. And whoever finishes top of that pile will avoid all the. I do think, I do think there's, this is a significant transfer window too. Hard signing's a great start and Pally coming back in. He'll feel like a, a new sign yeah. as well. Once you yeah. get those two in, will be a massive, a massive boost and a good platform to build from. Like if you've got a good goalkeeper in behind him, Tommy McLeod's a good player in midfield. And but it does come down to is there anybody else you can get in with that bit of experience or with that bit of quality up top? Um, is there anything in particular that that you're looking from this transfer window at Beverland and the, the two guys who already come in as ahead? Neil? Uh, I think we need another midfielder, centre midfielder. And I'm not, I'm not having, I am not throwing pops or digs at any player and like that, but I'm ju- I just think we need another, another centre midfielder. I just felt that in Boxing Day, it was I'd sort love, of. Weird. I'd love to see Barney back in central midfield. I know he's helping out in defence, like, but yeah, yeah I, he, I like, he, he, I like he's, Barney. he wins it, he, and he moves it simply, you know. I think we're missing Luke Wilson. You said that already, Gareth. Um, mm-hmm. But I think I think we're maybe a wee bit just late in midfield, and uh, that's where I would prioritise personally. Um, if if like I mean if if, <laughs> if anybody's listening can play centre midfield, please. <laughs> Matthew Tipton. <laughs> Here, do you know what Jack Welch is available? She can have a shout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that's that's where I I would make a sign. Like, but I I, Neil, I know we didn't want to maybe dwell on this too much but there's obviously this is what day is this Wednesday Wednesday night yeah. you know obviously there's, there's the Lee bonus situation is kind of unclear you know so there's someone who it's going to have a, going to have a big burn poor down season what happens if you lose Lee and don't sign a striker that's obviously worrying because you wonder then where the goals are going to come from it was already talked about how significant Lee and Adam are when they play together if Lee goes and nobody comes in and you're just left with Adam, that's going to be difficult um, because Dungannon are going to strengthen Warren Point, I think, have already signed. I'm not sure. They've signed a couple of players, I think. They have. Three they or have four. Four, yeah. So, like, they're not going to just sit. Um, so, I do think, well, like, don't even, Matthew Tippin doesn't need me to tell him that um, he, he, needs, uh, he needs something and he can't afford to lose Lee and get nobody in return. I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure if Lee, if that, does if what you're saying transpires I would say Matthew will have somebody lined up I, I I can't imagine going into the second half of the season if, or even we yeah. saw this coming anyway he's not going to go in blind into this no exactly this like, at it, like so exactly and for for me the interesting part in how it shakes out is that if I was put it down I might think the best thing to do is to try and encourage Lee to go to Lintorn because in turn of lots of money so you could get lots of money and they also have lots of players <laughs> have lots of strikers who aren't getting any game time and like obviously maybe I'm a bit biased because uh, I grew up with him around Lenavon and he played for Lenavon but I think Andrew Mitchell's a good striker like he was the top scorer in the league at Dungannon he's not playing at Lintourne he's not happy well he can't be happy I mean I don't know I haven't asked him about it but like he can't be happy not playing at Lintourne Andrew Mitchell's a very good replacement for Lee Bonus, and I have no doubt could score a few goals. I don't know whether he whether he'd want to go to Portadown, whether it could happen, but for me, if I was at Portadown now, I might think this is the best outcome we could hope for. But the flip side of that is, if I was Lee Bonus, the club I would not want to go to is Glentorn, because you're not going to play. They have the best striker in the league, and they have plenty more besides them, so you're not going to play. At Linfield, Linfield have one striker. You are going to you are going to get more game time at Linfield and probably at Lauren too. But so that's where I think the really interesting part of this comes because I reckon for, I mean, I don't have any inside knowledge in this, but I reckon that the best option for Portadown and the best option for Lee might well be two different things. And it'll be interesting to see how that checks out. And who knows, he might even stay at Portadown. Like, who knows? 
but it's going to be really so, interesting. Sorry, my yeah. phone's ringing here. I think it's Andrew Mitchell's agent, actually. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, me. that's me. That's why I was saying that. <laughs> I think you've covered most of it there, Gareth. I, I, I will say, look, listen, there's plenty of players out there, and there's not just one or two names. There's lots of players out there who are maybe unsettled at their clubs or aren't getting game time. And one thing's for sure, you know, Lee's got four and a bit years left on his contract to port it down. So the ball's in our court and nothing will happen unless it suits the club, you know. Um, he's obviously, we love him because he's local and he, you know, he plays for the shirt. And um, But no, no one's ever going to hold him back from progressing his career or, or any of that kind of the, stuff. But it, it, will, it, will, it will just, it will have to suit us yeah. as Portadown Football Club. Nobody's going to move them to somewhere else unless it really suits unless there's adequate replacements lined up and all of that kind of thing so as you said it has to suit but at the same time the the landscape has changed in recent years obviously if this had been six or seven years ago you might have thought well I don't want them to go to play part-time for somebody else but now it's like you're standing away somebody's full-time employments like Reese Marshall and Bobby Burns coming back to the Irish League a few years ago, if you'd said they were going to come back to the Irish League and play for Glentor, and you'd be going, what? Whereas now it's like, well, yeah, like you can't, you can't begrudge them to it. You can't begrudge them at all. And the amount of money that is kicking about now, you know, money that might, might not seem a fortune to Alarn or Glentor and is a fortune to port it down currently, you know, so there's all that stuff going on too. But Yeah. Well, maybe. Um, obviously, in the last sort of few days, um, I don't know if it's the same on your boys, uh, in your boys' Twitter feed, that it seems to be a lot of people that you don't follow or whatever, their garbage is coming up on your feed on a regular basis. Is this just Hey, well, maybe I was starting to see your tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! You're never coming on the show again. I actually, I actually deleted, well, firstly, I unfollowed every single person on my Twitter and then it deleted my Twitter. And then three days later, I started a new Twitter. <laughs> so I don't follow anybody. I'm, I've got one follower who's <laughs> Stephen Hines, ported down under 20s manager. I'm never going to tweet, mate, but I do appreciate the follow. Like. <laughs> right. So I don't know if you've noticed, but recently on Twitter, it seems to be that people you don't follow, like and it's, it, all the stuff appears on your feed. And, and it's it's people from similar interests and stuff. So yes, obviously, yeah. mine comes up. It's a lot of Irish league stuff comes up. Mine, mm-hmm. and a lot of it is Glentoran fans, right? For some reason, that loads of their stuff comes up, and it's the same people day in day out talking rubbish, right? And I see a load of them tweeting and being like, "Oh, how are we paying? They're going to be paying, and hopefully this doesn't happen. Like, but how are we going to be paying this amount of money for the bonuses, this and that, and blah, 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 blah." And it's just like, hold on a sec here your club have been bought over by a millionaire. So if you want our player who is under contract for another four and a half years and is a very good young player, you're going to pay the money for him. It's not going to be like it might have been back in the day. Oh, the Glens want this player. We'll get him, no sweat. You want the player, pay the effing money. <laughs> right? Just put that up. Effing, the the effing money. money. No, but right. <laughs> <laughs> right enough. Do you know what I mean? You have people saying that. And it's just like, you know, Porter Down, you know, have like this last season, a lot of these players were tied down to long term long term contracts because we knew the position that Porter Down are in the league that, you know, at the minute some of the bigger clubs are going to come in look at them, right? And Lee Bonus was naturally going to be one of them players. So Porter Down were smart to get him tied down to a contract because he knew whether it be interesting with full time teams were here, which, and by the way, I wouldn't begrudge any player over here um, going to, to, to play full-time football because it, it doesn't happen all the time over here, obviously. And there was interest across the water and stuff. So obviously, you know, if you're going to want the player and because of the, the rising prices and some of the money being chucked around by Glen Thorne and Lauren and the Blues, obviously, you know, a player like Lee is going to cost a lot of money. So to all you Glen men mouthed on Twitter, suck it up. <laughs> Do you think many of them listen to our podcast, Neil? Oh, I hope, well, do you know what? Let's tag them. We'll tag them. We'll just tag them. <laughs> is this an official Port of Iron stance? Is this a, a you know, do you know what? It's all me. Uh, it's, it's funny. A mate of mine, well, he fired up in the WhatsApp group today. Some Glen Torn fan, it's obviously came up on this day two years ago, a tweet he put out. And it was a tweet that it was of 
when Portadown played the Glens at the Oval two years ago, you remember when the, they beat us in the penalty shootout in the Irish Cup, yeah. and they scored the, the most ridiculous, never a penalty in your life in the last minute. Mm. And you can, there's the Glen Torrid fans all mouthing on the race, but the, the, the caption was two balls on the bleep pitch. And it's got fired in our WhatsApp group again, but it's actually me that says it. It's me that's saying it on the video. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, it's just, I just noticed recently, like loads of Glen Torn fans, it, it, loads of their stuff just appears. And like Glenfield fans, not just the usual uh, self anointed Irish League Twitter celebrities. And I'm just like, <laughs> what garbage is like, this? Like Irish about? League Dave. This, was, this is the original Irish League celebrity least, you're talking to here. But, uh, <laughs> at least he's funny. He tells <laughs> tells us that he's deleted us all off his Twitter. <laughs> Neil's, too, Neil's too young to remember Ashley Dave. I think. Oh, God, but like you see, you see the nonsense like flying around on those forums and stuff. I get sent screenshots all the time, and I'm just like, I'm not on them. I don't want to see them. I'm just like, what planet do some people live in? It's just like you know, you want a player, you have to pay the money for it. It's not a case of you know all. You know, we'll wait them to rock the boat, or whatever. It's just like you want the player, pay the money. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah, it is. It is. It, that's that's about the bottom line of it for for this month. But it's going to pay be the money and give us six year first team players. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, well, we uh, yeah. Who we do you want, Neil? Who do you want? Uh, okay, uh, we, I, I did say I think we need a line them up midfielder. against the wall, and we'll. Pick. I did. I did. I did say I think we need a centre midfielder. So if Linfield want Lee, uh, I'll take Chris Shields. If Lauren <laughs> want Lee, mm, I, I quite like Thomas Cosgrove. I think he's very good. That's the first. Um, pos- that's the first positive thing you've ever said about Lauren Football Club. You actually um, like one of their players. And. Do you know what? If, if the Glens want we're them to all go going up. to see if you <laughs> to the county under yeah, I, 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 like, I would like to say it that I do actually like it. I think it's a good song. It's catchy. Wow. Um, fair play. Fair play. Check, check out Neil's article on the Belfast Telegraph <laughs> digital platforms. Yeah, absolutely. Didn't want to say Gareth, it. Gareth's article, sorry, not Neil's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if the Glens want Lee, I'll take Luke McCulloch. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. He's injured. He's injured. It's a terrible I'll choice. I'm not even going to play him until next year. Oh. Thank goodness you're not the manager. Goodness. <laughs> so, Gareth, <laughs> Gareth, Gareth before listen, before uh, I'm just I'm I'm clicking here that a lot of our watchers and listeners, a lot of um, <laughs> All won't two. won't have realised what we're referring to. But yesterday the news broke that Lauren have brought out a single for their county Andrew Shield. Oh, to be fair. Final. To be it's fair, just some guy, it's not it, Lauren. Yeah, it's a Lauren fan has done this just uh, yeah. to support his team and fair play to him. Absolutely. But I was just going to say, um, you you had a bit of a chat with him today. And I had a chat with him you... today, yeah. He's a really nice guy and he just said that uh, he he owns a gym and uh, the player's been coming using it and then through that he's been going to the games and Kenny Bruce, telling Kenny Bruce he's a singer and Kenny sort of said, oh, you should write a song for us. So he's like, I sure. So he did it for a bit of a laugh last year and then he's done one for the County Adam Shield as well. And uh, are, you, are you prepared to sing the chorus of it right now? If I could remember the words, I would. 2-1, Glentoran, 4 nil bala me. No. That's, that is the best bet, there's no doubt. Listen, I am telling Mark to you. No. No, I'm telling Mark to edit this bit out of the podcast. Like this is this is a ported on show. This is not a show. To, to no, you can, you, can, you can throw in a wee bit of general Irish league banter, like from Irish yeah. league. Dave. It gives us a break from, from the. It gives us a break from the doldrums of eleventh position in the league, like you know. <laughs> the the it and glib. It's not tenth. Is it eleventh? Eleventh. Is it eleventh? Oh my word, I need to look at the table again. I didn't realise this. So, do one, your one preparation, thing. Gareth. Like. Sorry, so it is 11th. There, bless us all. One thing I will say as well, you know, like Port of Downs, we seem to be able to give teams, well, apart from Glenavon last week, we seem to be able to give teams a game at Shanmark Park. And I was actually saying to Mark Beatty there last night, before the split, four of Port of Downs' last five games were all at home. So, oh, yeah. oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. We're, 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 there's still plenty of games, like, but, um, but yeah, yeah. But I think that's going to be alright. Um, I I do too. I do too. I do. I'm I really guess. interested to see who else comes in this month because, well, I, I think there, hopefully there'll be more. And uh, 
yeah, I think they'll be all right. Um, I hope apparently, right. apparently Rashford's a bit unsettled at the moment at United. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I just feel bad for Tippy at the minute. I think is my overriding feeling about the whole thing because. Like there is a lot of negativity about on social media and somebody mentioned it earlier that some of it's now being directed at him. But like these people here saying these things don't see what goes on in the background and didn't see the work that goes in. And like Tippy's arrived at the club and like, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's in, he's arrived with a vision for the overall club. Like he hasn't just come in, taken a bit of training and turned up for a match on a Saturday. Like he's embedded in everything to do with Ported Iron and is trying to shape everything to do with the club with a long-term vision. And the fact that there's a few shite results at the minute, there are people are saying the manager should go from like it's bigger than that. It's a bigger project, and I just I genuinely do think that it's gonna come good in the end. Um, and well, like as good as things can realistically be for clubs like Port Down and Glenavon now. Not saying they're gonna win the league because, well, we are where we are. Look, look, look at across the water, right? And I'm speaking this because it's my team over there. Look at what Arsenal. Right, look at the stick Michael Arteta was getting, right, from like so many people, and he was getting hammered and hammered and hammered. And people were like, oh, he's got this game to save his job. If he doesn't, he's gone. He's gone. He's going to get the sack. Blah blah blah. And then it's the patience. Arsenal, you know, stuck with him and the patience. And now, like you said, Gareth, you know, you vision and long term mm. future, and you build from the bottom up. And now you can slowly see it happening. You know, yeah. it, it. My problem. With football fans in general, like all across the board, not even just Irish League, England, or whatever, it's people are far too fickle in short term. Like yeah. you, it, and and for me that is fundamentally wrong all across the board. And I, a, I, no, it's just people acting on emotion, which like which is understandable too. But um, I keep when, thinking of six weeks ago there was Glentoran fans climbing over the fence to try and get Mick McDermott <laughs> out of the club, and now they're probably <laughs> gonna, I, they're probably gonna go on and win the league, like. I know this is uh, it. This I is... said Limfield at the start of the season, and I'll stick. I'll stick. I said I still stick with that. I said Lintorn. Listen back, mate. Who <laughs> won? <on>, Lintorn. Four <laughs> nil ball me now. <laughs> oh dear. Right, listen. Let's forget about the league because Port Arne have a, a, another game this Saturday. We're playing Limavada United in the Irish Cup. So, you know, uh, it's always we'll good be to there. Go. Oh, we'll be there. <laughs> It's always good to go on a cup run, uh, and you know this is a competition. You know, you know, Portland should be targeting. You know, because there's always you know the odd scalp here and there. Like so, Garth, what what should the Irish Cup? It's I'm sure it's always a fun time. You know, for a journalist and stuff to report on stuff because there's clubs in it. You know that you wouldn't usually expect to be there and stuff. So, yeah, what's, what's your take on the cup? I love it. Absolutely love it, especially fifth round. Well, first round day, they've changed it. This is no longer fifth round day. This is now first round day. Know, that, that is, Gareth, that has, that. Mate, that's no. bothered me so much. That's it's just awful. scrapped 100 years of history or awful. whatever. Beyond awful. Like, yeah, horrendous. But I'm going to call it fifth round day anyway. And uh, oh, it's the best. I love it. I, it's the best day of the year for me. I actually can't work this Saturday, which I'm glad about. But um, it's uh, yeah, it's the best day of the year, and uh, well, fingers crossed, we're down and get a win. Um, they need to at ho- it's in a home to Lima Valley, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think they'll be all right though. Um, you know, I was reading there was a wee article in the paper there this week. The whoever I forget his name, but the the Lima Valley chairman was formerly their manager, was formerly a Wolverhampton Wanderers player in the Premier League. For about right. fourteen, you'll be writing that down. You'll be going for. Let me see. Well, it was in the it was in the Sunday Life back page or maybe inside pages on Sunday about him. I forget his name though, but he, he got injured or something. But he right. Steve yeah. Bull. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that was interesting, and then, but then part of that article said that. Um, had had a load of COVID cases over the last couple of weeks as well. So I fully expect us to win, but at the same time, it's the cup. They'll be coming up here thinking, yeah. give it a right go. Like. Um, they did all right in the League Cup as well. Mm-hmm. They got the yeah. quarterfinals. Because obviously Lee and Adam both didn't play a Balamina. Do we know where they playing this Saturday? I would imagine so. I think... Um, 
Adam obviously had an ankle injury. I think it's healing up all right, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've got an exclusive for you though, Neil. Do you remember earlier you were slagging the kit man, kit manager? Not slagging. <laughs> you, you were calling them out. You were calling them out for fur digs in the rec free car park. <laughs> I, I've, I'm just texting him here. You can sell something. tickets for that. Oh, uh, big time. He there was a couple of shirts. There was a couple of red shirts had got ripped in the previous match, and because the supplier wasn't open at Christmas, he wasn't able to replace them. And Jason, being Jason was not sending two players out in a ripped shirt, so he just put the yellow kit on them. So no, fair, fair play. I knew, no, I knew there was another reason for it. I'm only joking, mate. I'm only messing. Don't, don't beat me up. Has <laughs> <laughs> uh, he texted though? Is that what he... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what my dad... He, my, uh, I was even saying, I was like, oh, the yellow kit, I'm... I'm old school. I, I don't think there should be changes unless you know there really needs to be. Like, yeah. and my dad was just like, "To be fair, we're party what?" And it's a nice kit. And I was like, "I know, but like, meh. no, I That's like just, because I, if you're only gonna wear it where you need to wear it, what you're gonna wear it at Lauren? And is that it? Crusaders have worn a couple of times no, there, Cliftonville. Uh, but still, it's not very many. It's a lovely kit. Oh, it's, it's a beauty. Well. It's a Brilliant. Beauty. I really like um, it. I would love yeah. a long, long sleeve version of it with no. I'm not even going to say that that's offensive, but I just want a long sleeve version of it because in about twenty years it'll look so vintage. Like, did you, you put know in what? your order for Jason for the end of the season? Which one to hold you over? I'll take a small piece, Jason. Do you know what? I'm going to put it down top, Gareth. Okay, it's really we'll nice. So, we'll get you sorted, mate. We'll get you sorted. <laughs> it actually, Gareth. You know what? You know why we're here. Seeing it. Garth, this is his first time he's been in the show this season. But do you remember a few weeks ago, Dave, when we did the weekly feature? Yeah. And we did what's our which which weekly feature? It was about the, the kids. Can I can I interrupt you one second before this? What year were you born, Garth? Nineteen ninety. Oh, I mean, the there's a yellow shirt with just the number eighty seven on the back of it, which apparently. So this is listen, Jason Hall, fur juice. Every kit has to have a blood shirt. And the number on it has to be registered. So right. there's there is one yeah. yellow kit that he carries around with the number eighty seven on it. So. Why eighty seven? Don't know, but I'm gonna I'll get Hannah printed on it for the end of the season. <laughs> it's, yeah. Is it maybe eighty seven because that's the year Jason was born in? Yeah, uh, was no. Yeah. Oh, I know now. No, because I did ask him that, but he was born in nineteen eighty eight. It's because our club was established in eighteen eighty seven. That's quite nice. Oh, okay, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Right. Okay. Sorry, I'm um, going Just like I was saying, Gareth, when you're sitting there and praising Paul Lyons' lovely away kit, we were, a few weeks ago we did a weekly feature and it was you have to pick your, what you think is the three nicest Irish League kits of this season and the three least nicest. Oh, I'd need to see pictures of them here, goodness sake. Yeah, through oh, well, well, maybe we'll save that well, for another day then the next time I'll, 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 I'll just give you my, my least favourite. is okay. The Lenovan shirt. Because it's an away, like it's an away shirt. What, like, why is it white? Why is the Alvin's home shirt white with a little tiny bit of blue on it? I think it's horrendous. Um, it like if it, yeah, no, not for me. I don't know how it was allowed to happen. But Lenovan are now playing in a white home shirt, and it's weird. They have a navy third kit as well, <laughs> which they turned up to Shamrock Park with in the first day of the season. Anyway, we've we've beat that one to death. Like, Listen, right. <laughs> Um, just so, I, I just want to say uh, down at the game against Glenavon there last week I was really impressed with the new shop under the stand yeah it's been opened up really really impressed so I again implore any Portadown fan to, to go and check out the new the new shop underneath the main stand and speak to Gary McNally and uh, he'll get you sorted with all the latest Portadown merchandise and the new retro range is actually magnificent uh, wouldn't you agree Dave? With Phoenix range, ah, oh, there's some class wee bits in the moment. Like, there's a wee pair of swim shorts would suit you well, Neil. <laughs> I'd like to see you in those sometime. <laughs> oh, hey. Listen, uh, no, but... um, Davy Jamison Jr. and Gary McNally, uh, Gary's the shop manager. They've, they've worked hard at clearing that room out. Uh, there used to be tumble dryers and washing lines and everything in there, so they've, wor- they've worked hard at putting radiators and clearing it up. And Gary's there all the time. Uh, just rearranging stock and putting stuff out and taking orders so that is real I mean any club it's a real key thing to for cash flow isn't it really and um, yeah. 
It's like the new club hat. How nice is that as well? It's, it's a lovely colour and it's warm. It's a nice tight one. I like a nice tight one. It is. One. <laughs> Have you just been I given free hats to plug these? <laughs> no, it's free hats. Are you joking? Uh, I, bought, I bought three of them and I got a pound off. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> And you should be grateful for it, Dave. <laughs> no, so I went like I went and got that hat there before the Glenavon game, and uh, Gary was like, "How many? How many is there of these here?" And I was like, "Oh, Kirsty's here, but dad, my brother are there as well." And he goes three, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah." He was hold on a second. And I was thinking, "They can give me three of these new hats here, please." This is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> give me three Santa hats. <laughs> is, is he giving out the Santa hats? I need those for the next Santa Hat Saturday yeah. in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, right enough. Um, folks, check out the, the new club shop. It's actually brilliant. So uh, I'm really impressed. Um, it's definitely one of the best in the league. Like, so there's some really, really nice stuff there. So, yes. And where is it, Neil? It's moved, hasn't it? Yes, it's under the main stand there. And um, once you go past the boardroom and stuff and then um, where the bar is now, it's on your left-hand side towards the, the end of the stand and I, I was very impressed. I think it's it's really neat and tidy. Like, so uh, all Port Iron fans should go and, and check that out and spend a lot of money on it, please. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we'll wrap it up there, folks. What do you think? Yeah, can I just say that the um, Head of the Road Player of the Month for December 2021 is... Greg Hall. Well done, Greg. He had a brilliant December. Um, closely followed by one or two others, but I think Greg just playing in a variety of positions and clearing things off the lines and just being consistent, uh, he really deserves that. So I think we're going to sort him out this Saturday with his tankard and his uh, meal voucher for the head of the road, which is a great little country pub restaurant out in Tertarahan, out to Dungallon Road, out of Port Down, and thanks to John Lawson for sponsoring that. Yes, indeed. Gareth, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's okay. always thank a pleasure you having much. you. Thank you very much for having me back on, despite uh, me turning you down twice before now. It's, uh, <laughs> good to be back. Gareth, I, I've got one very important question for you. So oh, you and Philly okay. Major turned up at Shamrock Park on the Boxing Day. Who did you kick out of that seat to, to turn up at Shamrock Park on Boxing Day? Uh like it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. Peter Sentiment was supposed to be doing the match. Was it? Um, Peter's there all the time, isn't he? He's there quite often. He did, he was there watching, so I'm sorry, Peter. If you're listening, wasn't my fault. These so, things happen when you're yeah, happened to me in the past too. You just get shunted listen, up. Someone like Philip Major gets priority every single time he walks into Shannon oh, Park. So what a man. What a he's man, good. isn't he? He's good on the radio, isn't he? Like? Oh, he's class. I love him. He's, He's got uh, a face for it, like. We're the new Joe <laughs> and Liam. Their history. Me and Philip. Nah, nah, listen, me and Philip have done co coms before in the oh, live stream, yeah. like. So. Yeah. Now, if he had, if we made him pick, he'd choose me. Oh, right. right. Well, listen. Here, you're saying about me and Hallball having a fight out the back of the stand. Maybe you two have a fight over Philip Major then. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't. Gareth, 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 anybody a, would beat me in a fight. It's a. I, a, I, it's a it's a wrestling match. You've got uh, Gareth Hanna, Dave Wiggins, Philip Major hanging above the ring in a shark cage. <laughs> Never mind that. What's it? He's got some sort of stupid Twitter handle, hasn't he? Yeah, it starts I can, with X. I can never it? find him on it. Yeah, it's something weird. I find him. Xana Dumman one. Uh, something like that. Yeah. So I'm asking him right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hey, better, before... <laughs> me or Gareth Hanna? Well, Flippy's got back there straight away to say it was me. Like, <laughs> uh, right, folks, uh, we're gonna love you and leave you here. And uh, hope you had a, a really nice Christmas and obviously a happy new year. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Airports TV YouTube channel. And you can also check us out on a variety of different platforms, including Spotify, Anchor, and Apple Podcasts. So, thank you very much. And yeah, have a good one, folks. Have a good weekend. Gar, it's been a blast. Dave, see you at the weekend. Much. When the ports go up to win the Irish Cup, we'll be there. We will be there. <laughs> Here.